Isaiah chapter 3, verse number 13. And let me make a little note here. I don't know how well what you can pick up, but if you hear drums or anything like that, that's our neighbors having a party down the road. So I don't know if it will pick up, but if you hear drums, that's the reason. It ain't us. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 3, verse 13. I feel a sneeze coming, so <coughs> pardon me. The Lord standeth up to plead. And standeth to judge the people. Now the old times it used to be that the judge would actually, when he gave his sentence, he would rise. But the Lord standeth up to plead. And it just came to me now for first John. Sometimes I the Lord says, Hey, what about this? And I'm like, okay. First John. Uh, where is it? First John. I turn my pages carefully so I don't rip my Bible. First John 2, 1. My little children, these things write unto you, that ye sin not. And if a man sin, we have an advocate the Father, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You know what happens in a courtroom? You got the defendant and you got the plaintiff. And in a trial, the one that stands up in the courtroom is the lawyer. The lawyer will stand up. And he'll defend before the judge and if there's a jury and the other lawyers. The Lord will enter into judgment. I said, wait a minute. The Lord standeth up to plead. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord just showed me that just now. That's our advocate. The devil gets up there and says, I don't know, I don't know if he says God. I know he won't say Lord God. He says, you see that sinner down there, one of yours? You see what he did? Accuser of the brethren, Job 1 and 2. Stiley did X, Y, and Z. And the Lord Jesus Christ at our tail puts his hand, relax. Did you confess? You, okay. Jesus Christ stands up before God the Father as his father. The charges brought to by, by Satan, the devil. Are true. My client, our son, our child, says, Yes, he committed that crime, Father. And Father, he's put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, me, when I died on the cross. So, Father, I plead guilty of our son who is guilty, but us, hey, Father, the payments are been paid in my blood. And then it says, and standeth to the judge the people, that would be Israel in context, but spiritualized with the church, the father would stand up and say, I find no fault in him. I find no sins. I don't know what sins you're talking about. If they're under the if if my son, the advocate for my child, if he says it's under the blood of Jesus Christ, if that sin's been confessed. I am faithful enough to forgive and to cleanse. I don't see no sins you're talking about. So you see, the Old Testament is worth of reading. And I got a note here, but we won't go there, but Acts 7.55. The Lord will enter the judgment with the ancients. We saw the ancients in chapter 3, early verse, verses 1, 2, and 3, somewhere in there. Verse 2. I mean, we call them elderly. We call them senior citizens. And there's a group that God said, you know, inspiration of the Holy Spirit of Isaiah writing. Ancient, that's old. 
And God will enter a judgment with the ancients of his people, Israel. God is going to judge Israel. At the second advent, any Jew who has received the mark, and there will be some that will receive the mark, just because they're Jewish, I'm of Abraham, they'll go into hell with the, with the Gentiles that received the mark. Those that were in the life of Jesus Christ, the 33 and a half years that he lived, and then the three and a half years, especially of Jesus' ministry, all the Jews that when Jesus walked and talked and, and spoke of the kingdom and everything that is recorded in the gospels and all that's not recorded in the gospel, you're a, you're a Hebrew and you didn't trust the Messiah that was living and breathing and talking and suffered and died according to scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. That all, the, the grave of the Old Testament saints came out of the grave and he came back and he was there for 40 days. Just because you're of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you did not believe that, then you're going to hell, even as a Jew. Jesus gave us an illustration of a rich man that was in hell, and he says, Father Abraham. Well, to say Father Abraham means, hey, I'm in the lineage of Abraham. And the princes thereof. Now as far as the, the, the people. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. And we'll find out later on. Isaiah chapter 5 coming up. That vineyard. Matthew 21. That vineyard is, the, is Israel. You've eaten up my people. I got a note here we won't go to. But Deuteronomy 24.21. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Now, there was a death in my family. And I, I, I dealt with it. And I, I know people have done, dealt with it. And the example is, is probate court when, especially the state, and I'm not going to mention no states, when they come in and they take it off. That's devouring the poor. Now, I'll tell you another thing that, that uh, devouring the poor when it comes to the estate, the probate. is I don't know if it's all 50 states. I don't know if, if it's a state thing or if it's a federal thing. But that they tax upon an inheritance. That is devouring. Listen, you listen. You take a man or woman and they lived in the house and they paid their taxes and they paid their, their mortgage and all that. And then one of them dies. Well, now you're going to have an inheritance tax. In the court for a criminal, that's called double jeopardy. The Bible says you're eating up my people. You put in, we, we've been reading that. You put an excess of burdens on them. That's what the government does. And Romans 13 says the power to be, and Peter writes it, we're going to obey the power. All right, you want us to pay an inheritance tax, we'll pay the inheritance tax. You want us to pay a gasoline tax, we'll pay a gasoline tax. Well, you know, they take our money and they support abortions and they support, God will deal with them. And God will deal with, with the Republicans and the Democrats, and I'm not getting political, I'm, I'm talking about eating up the vineyard. The people that are under oppression of the government, they'll be the government will be held be, before God one day. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. And that, I'm not getting political. Don't think I'm getting political. This is what Israel's doing. They're putting the thumb screws to their own people, and the law forbid it. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What's that? Everything that the Jewish people own, everything they have, is in your house. Eminent domain, taxes. Uh, you just went in there and took it by theft. <laughs> but the government has different names for their theft. And it's amazing, any government, I'm not, don't, you know, are you speaking about America? I'm not speaking about America. Any government, it's funny how it's illegal for the citizens, but it's legal for the government. 
It is illegal for you. All right, let me. I'll put. I'm not for gambling, but it's illegal for you to have have a have a legal to have five or six men sit around the table and play cards for money. It, it, okay, it's a sin, but it's illegal. But the Indians can do it in, in Connecticut. The Atlantic City can do it in New Jersey, and in Las Vegas can form and fortune their whole life and city upon gambling. And I don't know if all fifty states they have can have scratch off cards. But you can't have a card party in your own private house. But the government can. Now, I'm not for gambling. I'm just saying. I mean, you've got to have a license to carry a gun. Okay? Are your military, is your police officer, are, are their guns licensed? No. When I went to the U.S. sub-base and became a police officer, I was given a sidearm. I was given a medal to say I was a, 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 what was it now, marksman. I was legally able to carry a gun. I didn't have a license for the gun. Now, if I wanted to step off the sub-base, I wanted to step off the jurisdiction, then I would have to get a license if I wanted to carry a gun. And I'm not America, and I'm saying this is what Israel's doing to their own people. Judah and, 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 and uh, uh, Jerusalem, they're just devouring the people with taxes and burdens. And What mean ye that you beat my people to pieces? Now, do you think that's literal beating? <laughs> what did they do with Paul? Didn't Paul say I was beaten with rods? Didn't they beat Jesus Christ? Listen, it was the Sanhedrin that beat Jesus too. In that monkey trial, the, the night court they had, they had a covering over his face and they punched him in the face. Come on, Jesus, which one did it? Jesus was whipped by the Sanhedrin. You read in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, some were sawed asunder, some were, were put to the flames, some were put to the dens. Some were, you read that testimony? Those are Jewish uh, prophets, Jewish men of God that were put to some kind of uneasy living, if not torture. And who did that? The government of Judah, the government of Israel north. And also to beat the pe people to pieces is they're shaking the, the uh, I mean, I can't say piggy bank with Israel, but, you know, they're shaking the, the piggy bank. I, I hear one more coin in there. It's the, it's ours. We can't get that coin out. Smash that piggy bank. OK, it's ours now. And grind the faces of the poor. And that's not literal. It's you just, you're just rubbing it in. Isaiah is writing to us the hard times of living in Judah and Jerusalem for the poor. And the, the, the literal aspect of the Antichrist to the poor people, he's going to beat them and he's going to grind them if they don't take the mark. Because the only way you can be poor in the, in the, in the tribulation period is if you don't have that mark. And when you read James and you read about the rich people, man, it is a... a, a only those that are rich in the tribulation period are those that have the mark. Okay, I'll get back to America now. Only those that are rich in America make the rules, make the laws. The common average poor man, the common average middle class man does not have enough money to bribe this Congress or the Senate to make laws. We don't do that. Yes, they do. Not all. 
I can get on that one. We're not going to. Okay, grind of it. Now watch it. Say it the Lord God of hosts. Who just said what we wrote? Not Isaiah. God said it. So if God says it, you think it's happening. God is looking down from his holy heaven at his people and say, man, they're just being. God said that. You can't say, well, it's Isaiah and Isaiah doesn't know what he's talking about. No, 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 no. Thus saith the Lord. Okay, paragraph. Moreover, the Lord said, this is the Lord speaking now. Isaiah is, is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah is writing to us what God said. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, Isaiah wrote what we wrote, what we're reading and studying. Because God told him. Isaiah is the pen. The Holy Spirit is the ink. Okay, that's inspiration. More, now watch verse 16 now. More of the Lord said, this is God's being. Because the daughters of Zion, Jewish women, are haughty. There it is. Pride. Don't look down at them. Oh. And walk with stretched forth necks. Oh. I am somebody. And you've seen people like that. And they'll reference everybody. Else. Them people. I've had family like that who are rich. And them people. They just got their heads so far in the clouds. And I, you know, I'm somebody who I'm not. That's God saying it. And wanting eyes. Now, wanting eye is wandering. It's rousing. In sport. Their covetousness. Walking. And mincing. That's the only time that word mincing show, shows up in the Bible. As they go. You know, it's got that walk. like You know, we, we used to have an expression, I'll be clean. My poop don't stink. This is the women. They got their high noses up to in the air. And making a tinkling, a sharp sound with their feet. High heel. Those little tambourines and, and jewelry about the feet that when they're walking, they're, they're ringing. And you would think of Santa Claus and the reindeer coming. No, it's this rich Jewish woman. Ooh. Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. They want to be heard. Now, before we go on further into what we're reading here, let's take a look at what Paul says in opposition to what we're going to read next, 1 Timothy 2.9. You see, the scriptures is the scriptures of the scriptures. The scriptures will define itself when you study rightly you're not made ashamed. So, 1 Timothy 2, 9, Paul knows the Old Testament. He was educated and knowledgeable in the Old Testament, 2, 9. In like manner, also, that women, talking about Christian women, adorn themselves modest apparel with shamefacedness and severity, not with broiled hair, broiled hair. I mean, there's nothing wrong with fixing your hair. But when we go into Isaiah chapter 3, don't go too far. Now, my wives, I've been married twice. I'm a widower twice. My wives have had long hair. I want a woman with long hair. And they could do all things with their hair. They could uh, put it up in a bun. It, it, it all, I don't know what all the things. They, but you don't fix your hair. Everybody will look. And you don't spend 40, 50 bucks, 60 bucks and get a hairdo that's going to last three days. 
In opposition to 1 Timothy 2, 9, we're going to read the opposite in Isaiah 3. He says, not with broiled hair or gold. Now, there's nothing wrong with gold. Necklaces, earrings, uh, you know, rings. Don't say, well, I'm not going to get my wife a wedding ring because it says, God. that's not the point. When we read what Paul knows about Isaiah chapter 3, and we read it about the Christian woman, or pearls, or costly array, he's talking about the simplicity of woman. And when we go back to Isaiah chapter 3, we're getting the other side of the scale. Now, a scale with a woman 1 to 10. Number one, she's just naked and, and just walking around. And number 10, we're going to see in Isaiah 3. I mean, she's just she's all dolled up. She's all fancy. Up, she's all costly. That's not the virtual woman of Proverbs 31. As a Christian woman, you got to be a five. Don't be naked. Don't measure your sleeves like the holiest women do. Don't not, you know, have no gold or no wedding ring or anything like that. You can have that, but not to the excess that we're going to read that Paul knew in Isaiah 3. And every time I heard uh, 1 Timothy 2, 9, I never heard Isaiah 3. What's the problem? Paul knew the law. So this is where we left off. Verse 17. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of thy head. That, that's almost if you know the law, if you know the law, that looks like a leprosy. Or maybe if it's a future reference, maybe it's the mark of the beast. Maybe. I said maybe. The crown of the head of the doors of Zion, Jewish women. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. Listen, Hollywood does that today. The internet does that. Too. You can go on the internet today and you can see the secret parts of a woman you're not supposed to see. Only a husband or a doctor is supposed to see. And when God writes it in Isaiah chapter 3, it's supposed to be, oh, shame. There was a time, it's funny because I live in Daytona Beach. I see old photos of women at the beach in Daytona Beach, and you'd be like, wow, that sure ain't what the women are wearing today. I mean, they were covered up. Everything was covered up. And we live in an age today that I'm talking about Christian. There's nakedness. I have been in churches where the pastor's wife bends over in front of me. Oh, jeez. Man. Come on. I'm sorry. I've been in churches with the pastor's wife. There's something wrong with that. And you got pastors today. You know, if somebody came in, well, you know, with just a. It was a church one time where a woman came in. I mean, it's just. And they gave her a coat or something. It's like, yeah. I mean, there's a decency and there's no decency today in the world. There's no decency in the, in the church and there's no blushing. And God says, it's supposed to be a shame. I'm going to reveal your secret parts. Do you know that happened in World War II? Do you know if you see pictures of the Holocaust and the pictures of what the Nazis did to the Jewish people, there's a thing that when you see those Jewish people in the concentration camps, they're naked. Now, almost sometimes you guys, oh, wait a minute, I'm looking at history. They're not naked because they want to be naked. Today, they want to be naked. In that day, that's the interesting words, in that day, the Lord will take away, I mean, that's almost a reference to the second advent. Are we looking at a tribulation passage? In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery, that's the only time that word shows up, of their twinkling ornaments about their feet. They are wearing things on their feet that make them tinkle. Here I come. I'm coming in the room. 
I mean, there are some high heels, some clogs, and and that, that women wear. You, you sound like there's horses coming. Is that a horse coming? No, it's a woman. They want to be heard. And and will be to the woman that she's wearing shoes or some kind of of uh, ankle thing. You can hear her coming. That's what I'm speaking about, Isaiah. That's not to be a Christian woman. You say, is it wrong for her to have an ankle bracelet? No. But you do know what ankle bracelets are. You do know that they represent, you do have studied the history of ankle bracelets. I wouldn't let any females in my house wear ankle bracelets because I know what the history they're of. Before you want to do something, look at the history. And I have been rebuked by a man of God. You know, uh, no, 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 no. You better look at the history. And their calls, that's the only time that word shows up in the Bible, and that's a, a net, a hair net. And their round tires. We're going to start seeing parts of a car. B.C. 760, by the Holy Spirit, God, we're going to see things that you find on a car. You ever wonder why when you look at a car ad, you see that half-naked woman on the car ad on the hood? You know, She's strutting her stuff. Where does that come from? comes out of Isaiah chapter 3. You mean to tell me, Stiley, that you have why they show a half-naked woman to sell a car? Yeah, Isaiah chapter 3. Then to say, show her nakedness, her secret parts. Have you seen some of those ads? You can see some of their secret parts. Round tires. Do cars have tires? It's a hairstyle, like the moon. You mean Islam, the crescent moon. I mean, either is it South or North Carolina? I forget which one. They have the crescent moon on their, on their license plates. That's the worship of Islam. That's Listen, Abraham came out of the Ur of Chaldees and they worshiped the crescent moon. That crescent moon is just, it's not just the moon. It's false god worship. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't know history. The chains. All right, you know, necklaces and all that. But do you know that some automobiles used to have a, 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 a timing belt? It was a chain. And I've had the glory, I had to fix some of those chains. And the bracelets. Now, there's nothing wrong with bracelets, but have you seen some women, they got braces all up and down their arms? That's too much, Paul says. I mean, she, she's got a bracelet, and it may have, you know, little decorations of her husband and her children. Okay, that's fine. But Paul says to the Christians, let it not be, wow, let it not be your attention getter. Listen, one of the things, you know, this is Christmas, and, and they got their churches decorated with Christmas. You know what that does? That's the distraction of the message. You're looking at the pretty decoration. That's, that's a distraction. She's a distraction. And there's sometimes maybe a woman comes into church. She may be saved. And she is a distraction by how she dresses. I mean, you do know sometimes men can be drawn to a woman just by her looks. I mean, that's... Jesus said to the man, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he's already committed sin with her. He's already committed adultery with her. With her. Christian lady, wife, daughter, virgin. Don't dress so that a man's going to look at you and have the hot desire because Jesus said not only is he being uh, caused with, uh, with adultery, the sin, and charge. He says with her, if you dress and you have your attire to that you are causing attention to your body by a, to another man, 
You are not sleeping with that man, but you have got his attention with his eyes, with your makeup, paint in your face, and everything you do to get the attention of men. You have caused that man to have adulterous thoughts, and Jesus said, with her. And Isaiah tells us of these women, and Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 2, 9, be opposite of what we're reading right now. How come we don't get Isaiah 3 with 1 Timothy 2, 9? And why is it that almost in Isaiah chapter 3, we see the automobile? You ever in the races? You know, after that race car driver, he wins the race. He's got the trophy. And he's got the booze dumped over the place. Who does he kiss? The half-naked woman. You realize that? You realize your motorsports wraps themselves around half-dressed, if not totally undressed women. And where did that come from? Isaiah chapter 3. Read on. Verse 9, the chains, the bracelets, and the mufflers. That's the only place the muffler shows up in the Bible. No, that's that neck muffler in their ear muffs. But isn't it funny how a car has a muffler? And it deals with the exhaust. It makes your car quiet. And God says, I suffer not the woman to usurp the authority or to speak. Now, I mean, she's got a she's got ear muffs. She's got, you know, thing around it. You don't need to wear the whole animal. It don't need to be a thousand dollar stole. And if it's cold out and your ears are cold, okay, put the muffs on. But I have been in churches in Easter services. It's around, and these women are coming with these hats. It's like, where's the preacher? Like, lady, take that thing down. You're destructing the whole church service, that stupid hat. And the... again, it's calling attention to self. Paul said, remember 1 Timothy 2 9? Be simple. Don't be a distraction. I mean, you don't have to be banging a drum like our neighbors are right now to cause a distraction. Your dress, your attire can be a distraction. You can be dressed so weird. We, we had a television show growing up as a kid. It, it was Punky Brewster. That girl just wore weird out. It caused it. Wow. Where's that outfit? Oh, the preacher's preaching? Uh, but you see, yeah, that's, oh, look at that. Now, see, you cause a distraction. You cause the tension to be drawn to self. That's wrong. The bonnets. And some old cars used to have bonnets. The ornaments of the legs. There's a lot of leg stuff. The Holy Spirit talks about a lot of leg stuff. You know what one of the ornaments is? I, I forget. Garter belt. That's what it was. When I married my wife, Lisa, a Christian, fine Christian lady, wonderful lady. And, it, well, you know, you got to do the garter belt. She ain't wearing no garter belt, and she ain't revealing her leg to nobody. <gasps> You're not going to do the garter? No. Well, you got to have the garter. Yeah, you know what that garter belt is. Why do you got to reveal your leg all the way up? Better watch what you put on your legs, ladies. Headbands. That's the only time that word shows. Now, what's wrong with headbands? There's some been some weird, funky headbands out there. That I wouldn't walk. I, I, I was, you know, walk into church and you got little stars banging back and forth, or Christmas trees, or any other kind of. I wouldn't just wear my, my, my again. My wife, both my and my daughter, they have little simple little hair, and you don't even know they're wearing it. But there have been some women who come with headband. Woo what's that thing? Is it alive? <laughs> Is it going to jump back at me? And tablets. Now, I'm using a tablet right now. But it's not going to talk about a tablet. That's an item of clothing, of decoration a woman would have. An earring. 
Again, uh, there's earrings out there, and they always get my attention. Maybe it's just me. You can throw a basketball through those hoops. They're so big. Yeah, my daughter, she has earrings. They're small. And you really got to look at her. You ought not be looking at her that close to see what they are. They don't call attention. They don't cause a distraction. Listen, I'm not saying you don't need the stuff. None of my wives ever, and my daughter ever has to put makeup on. Never. Now, when I met them, they used to wear makeup. And when I got them in the Bible, they, you know, I said, listen, Jezebel painted her face. You want to be like Jezebel? Ooh, no, I didn't see that. Okay. Now, what you wear and what you put on yourself. Listen, you know what could be more offensive? And it was one of the couple times in the hospital, a nurse would come in. Man, lady, take off that perfume. What do you do? Pour that stuff in the bathtub and soak in it for two hours? There is just some perfumes like, whoa, that's offensive. Can't breathe now. I don't wear a mask for COVID-19. I wear a mask because you have perfume you're wearing. Don't be offensive. Don't get people's attraction. Don't be the center of attention by what you're wearing. Rings. See, you can wear rings. Don't ring to the... Don't... You know, the, the, the million dollar diamonds was a woman's best friend. You know, also, cars have piston rings. Nose jewels. <laughs> that was common back then. And it's common today. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I am distracted when I go to get a Coca-Cola and I look up and the cashier's got something hanging out of her nose. And my impact is to take a 9-volt battery and go, hit. <laughs> okay, that's me. And I'm playing, please don't sneeze with that thing in your nose. I don't need to see tinsel. It's distraction. But that's something, that, you want to wear a news, it, it's in the Bible. There it is. Proverbs speaks about a jewel in the in a, a, a snout of a pig. And John writes about a woman who is a false prophet as a pig returning back to uh, In my house, I would not have my women wear a new nose jewelry. You can go too far. I just, it's ugh, gross. Changeable suits of apparel. I mean, a woman's got to have clothing. She's got to have a closet full of clothing. I, I knew a woman one time. She had a whole entire closet of just shoes. Ridiculous. You're not going to wear that amount of shoes even if you wore a pair of shoes every day. Now, there's nothing wrong with having chains of clothes. Please, you got to wash them. But there's also, to the excess, there's also, you can spend too much money for apparel. Some women buy what they pay for a pair of shorts. You can buy a wardrobe at Walmart. I thank God, my, again, both my wife, they, they would go into the thrift shop and they would spend a day going through all the clothes and finding cheap, good clothes. And a lot of times, <clears throat> Lisa and Trace would come to me, look, I got this for $2. Well, that's really nice. And she said, look, the tag is still on it. Wow. I said, how much did that cost in the store? It cost 34 bucks. I said, you got it for two bucks? She goes, yeah. I said, you know what? She goes, what? You deserve to go out to eat today. Let's, what money we save, let's go out to eat. I treat listen, I don't believe in Christmas and all that, but I took care of my wives, okay? So here we go. And mantles. That's the only time that word shows up. And you find mantle with Elijah. Elijah. It's a covering, a shawl. And wimples. Wimples. What's a wimple? 
That's a purse. And again, women can get to the... I mean, that's not a purse. That's a filing cabinet. And, you know, I got to find my car keys and take them two hours to find their car keys. I, got this, I used to love it. I used to have one of the love bag. Okay, I know. It's a bag, okay? It's a bag. Just a purse that will ser serve your purpose. You don't need anything extraordinary. You don't need to be glittering. And, you know, you get a glittering purse and you leave half the glitter behind where you were. You don't need that. All right, here we go. Ready? Crisping pins. Crisping is the only time that word shows up in the Bible. What is a crisping pin? A curling iron. Now, there's nothing wrong with a curling iron, but don't get too fancy. My wife, Lisa, had she she fixed her hair, and she didn't fix her hair. Oh, you know, she fixed it how she liked it. She fixed it how I liked it. I mean, no, oh, I'm not going to get my wife a crisping pin because, you know, the style said, and I said, no, it, remember, remember, we're looking at what Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, Isaiah 3, don't go overboard. Okay? A woman is allowed to fix herself, but don't do, overdo it. I mean, all right, you're in a mood for a cake. And you're not really too much of a mood for a cake. So you go into the store and they got, I'll get a, you know, a cupcake is good enough for me. I'll do with a cupcake. You don't go in there and buy a wedding cake. I want a cake. I want a four-tier wedding cake. That's overdoing it. Okay? Glasses. That's a mirror. Glass beads. And yet, a car has a windshield. Now, it's not glasses like what we wear. Because they didn't have those back then. It's a mirror or glass beads. And fine linen. Listen, that virtuous woman had fine linen. But don't overdo it. And the uh, hoods. Well, we know what the hoods are. Cars have hoods. And it's funny because in Connecticut, where I where I lived for a while, there were so many crimes being committed by people wearing hoods. Hoods were actually illegal in Connecticut. And I was working for the newspaper then. You could not walk in the store having a hood on. You had to take your hood off. It's funny now. We walk around. We're all wearing masks. <laughs> I remember the first time we, we started wearing masks, and my daughter and I were in, were in Staples. And I was doing my order, and you could wear a mask if you wanted to, or you didn't have We didn't wear one because we didn't have to. I turned around, and there was, there was a black guy wearing a mask. Whoa! He goes, what's wrong? Sorry. I said, I thought, I thought the guy was robbing the place. <laughs> Here comes a guy with a mask. <laughs> we know what it is, those jackets. Again, don't. Go for a Christian woman to have a, have a hoodie, and in the back of it, it says pink. We know what pink means. Pink ought not to be advertised in a church. You got my drift? You don't need to be advertised. I looked up what pink was. That does not need to be advertised in church. It's kind of filthy. Okay? And veils. Now, women wore veils. But I guarantee there were some veils that would, I mean, the Bible states some veils, it, it marked you as a prostitute. You find that in the Bible. There was a prostitute's attire. And it attracted the men. Like, hey, you're a Christian woman ought not to be wearing attire that looks like a prostitute. And I've seen that. You ought not to be looking like the world, the Bible says. You ought not be dressing, acting, and looking like the world. You ought to be looking like a Christian. How's that? Study your Bible.
And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, perfume. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped somewhere, didn't I? Glasses, lint, fine linen, hoods. Where did I? I skip something? I'll keep on. Working. All right. Instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. I've already said some of your perfume, you may think it smells good. It stinks. Now, your perfume may smell good, but God will make it. You know what a disgusting smell is? And there's a perfume like it. The most disgusting smell, and I've had this happen, is when you go into a funeral home. There's a smell of that body that whatever they do, it, it, it's a it's a reeking, disgusting smell. And they also they got a smell like that that I, people in, in the stores I've smelled. And a smell that will stink is you got an infection. You haven't bathed. You haven't taken care of yourself. God will say, listen, I, I'll make it so you're not even going to wash. You're not going to bathe. We're already red. God's going to take away the bread and the water. What's one of the things you, you do with water? Bathing. You're going to have B.O. And you're going to run out of right guard. And right guard for the right and for the left. Don't look for left guard. Use it on both sides. Instead of a girdle, we know a girdle, a rent. And there are women that wear dresses with a rip all the way up. God says that is a shame. And yet today it's a fashion statement. What is supposed to be a shame in the Bible is fashion today. There's something wrong with that. And it's more so of a Christian woman. You ought not to be wearing a dress that's ripped up your side so we can see your legs all the way up and other parts of your body we ought not to be looking at. That rip up your dress in Isaiah 3 is supposed to be, God says, that's supposed to be a shame. Instead of a well-set hair, baldness. You know what that is today? Chemotherapy. I know my wife had beautiful hair. Two times, three times of chemotherapy, she lost her hair. And they had little knitted hats. And they had, and those are wonderful, great things. But you know, some you know, women have beautiful hair in chemotherapy. Some other drugs do it. And then there are just silly women out there who go and purposely shave their head. There was a woman, I think she was a fitness instructor or something like that. That woman, I see her and tell, oh, gross, lady. And now they got all kinds of hairdos of women. To, gross. Shame on the barber. And shame if they took the tip. Instead of a stomacher. And that's an ornament that supports the breast. And you can imagine what kind of maybe things they had for that. Uplifting. Wired. Instead of a stomach, a, a stomacher, a... Oh boy, can't read that. Something in. Girding of sackcloth. That's only girding in the Bible. Sackcloth is exactly what it's sack. It, it's uncomfortable. It used to, used to get our potatoes like that when I was a kid. Potatoes and onions. I remember getting at it. And ugh, I think the worst thing to that would be tweed. And a burning instead of beauty. And a burning would be a medical, a rash, a inflammation. I've got a rash of heat rash. I've always had every year heat rash. And it makes your skin red. It makes you look irritated. It makes you look sick. It makes you look diseased. By men. Right? The men shall fall by the sword. War. And the mighty in the war. And her gates. The city shall lament and mourn. 
Lamentations, Jeremiah. We'll get to that, Lord willing. And being desolate, alone, no one, empty, shall sit upon the ground. And that's, that's Lamentations. When we get to Lamentations, Lord willing. The daughters of Jerusalem just fancied themselves up. They were just as prideful as the men. And Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 2, 9, listen, don't be bare. But then again, don't go to the extreme. You know, your husband's going to buy you an engagement ring. And he's going to buy you a wedding ring. Amen. Glory to God. But the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, diamonds are not her best friend. And I thank God, Tracy, we, we got our wedding rings at, at Walmart. Lisa, we got our, our, our wedding rings at, 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 a, at a, um, a catalog outlet. Just plain and simple. Nothing spectacular. Nothing. They stayed within the budget. That's what all women ought to be. They ought not, like that virtuous woman, we already studied her, Proverbs 31. You can find the video. She stays within her husband's budget. And you know what? Wherever she goes, she don't want people gawking at her. This woman in Isaiah chapter 3, she wants the attention. Jezebel painted her face for, that, for I forget who it was. I can't think right now. She painted her face for the purpose of, hi, darling. What you doing in town? In the, in the islands. And I always say, you know, when whenever it comes to a woman with makeup, and I always say, Jezebel painted her face. And what are churches doing today? We got face painting. You know what God says to that? <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. Have a good day.